Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. I'm hoping you guys are all having a fantastic day. So today's upload is a very interesting, well, it's just a long-range outlook if you, if, you, if you think about it in that sort of sense. Um, but it's always interesting as what the models are showing. The European isn't really showing uh, as much activity as the GFS. But the GFS is just going crazy, showing storm after storm after cold after cold blast. And I mean, really, these things are about to get crazy. So um, if you guys uh, like these videos, if you want to support me, uh, please consider subscribing to this channel. Please consider liking this video. Liking this video means the world to me. You may think that this is just, oh, you know, a number. Well, no, it gets this video up to more people and that can, you know, inform more people and, uh, I guess, fulfill what they want. So if you like it. It's not gonna do anything bad. Go ahead. If you don't, I'm not. You know, I'm not telling you to like it if you don't like it. Um. So, uh, also consider supporting the Patreon. Uh, it's in the description box below. If you, you know, two, five dollars. I mean, I really, you know, it's basically a dollar or two per month. If you want to support this channel, uh, you know, this is free and it always will be unless YouTube changes its stuff. Then I'll stop making these videos. Um. Uh. I never want to pay. You know, make you pay for this, but. If you want to donate something, if you're, if you're really feeling generous, you know, this is completely optional. If you don't, you're awesome. If you do, you're, you're awesome as well. So let's look at this, um, and let's take this one by one. So right now we're looking at a, uh, really nothing going on. We have a little bit of light snow across the northeast. This was earlier thought this could be a stronger system. Now it's really, uh, uh, well, it had it a couple weeks ago or a week ago. It was looking a little bit stronger. It really doesn't have that moisture flow to it, and it's kind of cut off with this trough. That does bring chillier temperatures, uh, however, but not much snow or precip at all. And this is, you know, Saturday, Sunday time frame, so December 6th, 7th, and 8th. I'll see quite a bit of... <clears throat> uh, Quite a bit of cold across the northeast. Then we see a congregation of cold and several storms. One by James Bay, one over Montana, south of uh, uh, Alberta and Manitoba, or, or sorry, Saskatchewan. And uh, if we go through in time, we notice that this kind of gets into a very elongated front. We see a little bit of snow in southeastern Canada, kind of by the Nova Scotia. This is still really Quebec, but we're on Nova Scotia and Labrador, Newfoundland, those areas could see some snow out of that, but then notice in two, uh, basically uh, South Dakota, North Dakota, Minnesota, Wisconsin, and Marquette, Michigan get quite a bit of uh, snow, and this storm really brings in quite a bit of precip. This, this system is right now across the Pacific, so once it does make landfall, girl, we'll have a lot, it's a quick moving one, but once it makes landfall, we'll have a lot of more information about it, and uh, we, you know, the models will be more uh, consistent with their model runs, as, as right now, the GFS and European aren't in too much, much agreements, but notice this storm doesn't really, this exact storm doesn't really, is the, not, not really the one that affects the Midwest and parts of Canada, Toronto, and Montreal. This really uh, just uh, kind of sets the stage for another system to take its precip. Notice it just jumps from here to here, another low forms, and it, the precip from the other system just, it just scoops it right up, and you can see the system could be pretty significant, especially you know, there's going to be a big arctic front following this, and this will be definitely by far the coldest year of the season. We are, uh, not the year, because if you remember, we had a giant polar vortex in January, but definitely the coldest year of, uh, air of the season. An eight, uh, the high or the low in Chicago down to zero. Uh, I mean, just general or uh, the tens you know up to the tens uh basically for the daytime highs across these locations and then uh, you know not getting out of the teens if you go into missouri kansas but uh the nights could be just downright brutal um notice a little bit of snow on the back side of this for the chicago area wisconsin area but uh the real snow i guess occurs to the north this thing is gonna be a big system we're now it won't be super you know organized super wrapped in 984 so really relatively powerful but um if this could strengthen it could definitely do a lot of damage. I mean, this thing has so much moisture with it that it, it would be, you know, it's it's easy for it to just strengthen. It does once it gets out here into into uh, southeastern Canada, but notice a little bit of snow possibly in the southeast as well. So, you know, girl, I can't even say northern U.S. has possibly some snow heading for a northern Georgia, northern Alabama, and Mississippi. That would be exciting. And notice the cold air just reaches everywhere. 
in the eastern US, well maybe not the uh, extreme southeast, but uh, basically it does bring below average temperatures. Notice lake effect just gets cranking with this storm, uh, with this arctic wave whenever you get cold wave, cold air over unfrozen waters that are re relatively warm, and let me tell you, the waters are le relatively warm, especially across Lake Michigan and Lake Superior as uh, there has been uh, an abundance of rain across these locations. I mean, ridiculous amounts of rain. Uh, the, the lake levels are at their highest, almost at their highest for Lake Michigan. I think it's tied with it's about to beat the record if the above average precip continues and the records have been kept for over a hundred years so you know that means obviously the water temperature is gonna be warmer and um, well it's gonna be cooler but it's gonna be harder to freeze as it's deeper and uh, it's literally 36 inches deeper which may not seem like a lot that's that's really quite a difference and that will allow for the lake effect to really uh, just go cranking and then notice we have another system coming in here across Thursday December 12th this one uh, yesterday early the GFS models were showing it it didn't have a lot of precip to work with now again you could see I mean the, I mentioned the Gulf of Mexico is open for business and when it is open for business it means business um so uh, Notice that a little bit of, kind of like a weak little clip, I mean, moisture start system to the north brings a little bit of snow into Iowa, Minnesota, and then notice how it strengthens quite a bit across, uh, it, it, the low develops across Kansas, Oklahoma, and there's this like, snow shield up to the north, and this rides up and possibly becomes into a monster storm, which brings tons, tons of precip, mainly in the form of rain for the northeast, but look, at my friends in Canada, they're watching this, on the border of the U.S., where 90% of Canadians live within 100 miles of the of the border of the US. <clears throat> Notice that uh, Toronto would get slammed by this, so definitely some heavy snow for you out of the system if this were to, uh, you know, kind of keep its track together. Will it? Who knows? I mean, this is very far out. The, the main main thing I want to take away from this is the fact that there will be lots of storms. Now, where exactly they will be forming? That's a little bit of tough to say. We, you know, I'll be making separate videos on that as the storms continue. So uh, this video was more about, you know, a snowstorm update about the general snows. Um, I'm still gonna obviously talk about it. We still have a little bit of time left, but um, I will be making a video about the the storm itself, the big storm um, that is forecast to set uh, this this upcoming um, after this weekend, Tuesday and Wednesday. That one that across the Midwest, I'll make a separate video about that. But as of now, heavy snow is coming towards the U.S., it seems, with lots of cold air. Notice there, there could be a potential system across the south into the east. Earlier, the models were showing a beast of a storm uh, in the south with this second trough. Kind of, you can see the colder air as well. Now, this would be around the 16th of December. Notice uh, possible nor'easters trying to form over there. Get some snow in south in uh, New Mexico and northern Texas. Then you could see across Arkansas, Tennessee, we get another storm and possibly another system. And and more cold air followed by that so really I mean just um, an all-out very very wintry pattern uh, basically if a winter's uh, a winter lovers dream come true especially on the December time frame where most people want this cold okay, so notice that if we look at the uh, uh, the the five-day temperature anomalies you can see this basically goes from one to five two to six so you get the point um, it kind of goes up by each one day but includes five days at the beginning, a little bit warmer, then the cold air really comes in. Then it may moderate a little bit, but doesn't get above average. It stays relatively chilly, according to GFS ensembles. Let's look at the European models, and let's take a quickly look at the 500 millibar height anomalies. Notice that uh, across these locations, uh, again, we see that very big dip in the, Arctic, uh, in the jet stream. This brings the very chilly air around that same time frame, Tuesday, Wednesday of next week. That's followed by the big system. Uh, then we could get a ridge, a little bit of warm-up, but really the troughs just keep coming in. It seems like there's more in store uh, for the more uh, for the rest of December. So overall, very uh, again it's active, snowy, heavy snows coming towards the U.S. Uh, very big snowstorms. And if you were to look at the GFS 384 hour outlook, you know this may not look too impressive, but uh, th th these amounts are definitely underestimated in my opinion. As uh, some of these snowfall ratios with that very cold air will be very higher or much higher, and that could lead to you know instead of a 10 to 1 ratio, so the models assuming 10 inches of snow. Uh, for one inch of rain, it could be you know 15 or 20, so it could be even double this amount. Um, so that is that. Let's quickly look at windy.com and see what the European is showing. The European is has been the more conservative one out of the out of out of the bunch. Notice as that system across uh, the Midwest, the Tuesday one, not showing great amounts, but it's definitely showing some snow. And next 10 days, things start getting a little bit more active. Notice across Indiana into Virginia. I think it's a little bit conservative, but um, again, uh, it's 
they're you know the, the models that are they're getting their things sorted out um you can see that canadian puts a lot of lake effect across these locations and in terms of the storm potential let's look at the mslp and precip and let's quickly take a look at these storms uh it basically has a, it's more similar to the Euro uh, european than the gfs and that's because uh they're more i guess usually go hand in hand you know, like think about it kind of the gfs or the european and the canadian as both being the foreign models and uh, they are usually more hand in hand. So notice this when this uh, European uh, Canadian doesn't have the system as well developed. So it has it at a pretty weak point right here across um, Tuesday midweek next week, and it doesn't really develop it in the long range up until it reaches possibly you knows Canada. However, it still definitely brings in that very very cold air. Regarding this one, it brings in actually the coldest here out of all the models, which is interesting as it doesn't have a big storm leading up to it. Which usually the bigger the storm, usually the cold air has a greater chance of arriving in, in a bigger uh, fashion. But notice that uh, sometimes these storms with these Arctic fronts are underestimated and i think the gfs right now is doing a very good job but uh if you look at uh the uh, canadian further on it shows again more storms uh a big system across the northeast and then possibly another a uh, big storm dipping into the into the central u.s or in this case a clipper which could uh, kind of develop into that stronger system i want to show you what the gfs models were showing earlier in terms of the very heavy snow if you look at that 12 that's a good the 6z uh, thursday and i want to show you uh, it was it was insane this storm was across the very por southern portion of the country now this probably won't occur as they have basically backed off completely from this but i just wanted to show you that this is what the models uh might show throughout the winter as these cold air masses will allow for the cold air to sink all the way down into the southern u.s and at the bottom of these air masses uh these cold air masses sometimes these storms could develop and you know the south could be placed in that and i apologize uh, it's running a little bit slow right now, um, but uh, hopefully we could deal with that. As it's the end of the video and a couple more slides. So notice it's just loads of precip, loads of snow, tons of ice for these locations. It would be very far to the south, so that would be just you know the past possibly disastrous event. But uh, notice very very cold air. So that is uh, that is just a kind of a universal thing with all the models. The very cold air, snowstorms, you know pretty good chances. Uh, the, the, the you know the exact timing and placement of the storm is still a little bit unknown, but uh, definitely. Uh, it's definitely um, kind of, uh, you know, sh uh, shared between the models. Tried showing the age of 14 outlook, but it's running really slow again. So, uh, the, well, there we go. You can see still showing below average conditions from around the 13th through the 19th. And again, at this one point, these were showing ab above average conditions for the uh, places. It was showing the 8 to 14 outlook really above average for the, now uh, where the 6 to 10 day takes an effect. So basically, the 8 to 14 couple days ago were showing from the 11th through the 15th above average. Now they switch it to below average. So I'll take that 8 to 14 with a grain of salt. But they're showing cold nevertheless, and I think that should get intensified. So thank you guys so much for watching. Consider liking the video. Consider subscribing to this channel. Consider supporting the Patreon. It really means a lot. But really, please consider doing that. So, uh, And thank you. I'll see you guys in the next episode. See ya. Bye.